When we began editing, we had our knowledge of how to use iMovie from last year's productions. However, this year we wanted to use more of the features and create a more dynamic media product. An example of when we did this was when we reached the pinnacle moment of the trailer when Anna, the female protagonist, came into the welcome home party for Robbie. After this happened, we rewound everything that had happened so far in the trailer in order to portray the love story between Anna and Robbie. We did this by going on to clip adjustments and clicking reverse. We watched a video on YouTube on how to do this on iMovie. Therefore, we used two media technologies when we created this one construct in our trailer. This worked out really well and it was a good use of two media technologies because it made our production look more professional. Another time when we used something new in the trailer was when we had to record a voiceover due to the fact that the original shot had strong weather noises in the background. Our phones didn't really work to create a good voiceover so we just used the QuickTime player on the Mac. We made an audio recording and inserted it into the project. To create a contrast between the flashbacks in 1936 and the film's present of 1941, we faintly changed the colour in some of the shots to emphasise that these are in different times. We did this by adjusting the contrast and brightness of the clip, and this helped us in our trailer because it reinforced our point that this is a period drama. We had to use programs outside of iMovie to ensure that our media products looked semi-professional. We used many extra websites such as DeFont and Purple Planet for fonts and music respectively. We had to find period fonts for the film in order to emphasise its genre to the target audience. We used DeFont to find a typical typewriter font of the era. We also used a handwriting font from DeFont to use for our title at the end of the trailer because the main prop in this film is the letter, therefore we wanted a handwriting theme because we wanted to emphasise the importance of the letter and also we thought it just looked nice. We went on to Incompitech and Purple Planet to search for music to have as background ambiance in our trailer. We listened to many different genres and songs and some with very misleading names and we picked the best one for what we wanted. Another important aspect of the trailer was making the institutional information. I made most of the institutional information on Microsoft Word and did a screen recording on QuickTime Player. Then I imported it onto the iMovie project and cropped the screen bits out to make it look like proper institutional information. Although I used simple tools to create these clips for the trailer, it really made it look more professional, proving how sometimes the simplest of things can make a trailer look a lot more professional. When we created the magazine front cover we used Photoshop. We got the idea for the cover from this cover of Time magazine. Except instead of using two different people we used the same person but we adapted the idea. We had one half of the magazine front cover as the actress in real life in 2013. However on the other side of the magazine front cover we had the character of Anna from our trailer. And we did this by taking two photos of her and cutting them together. However, this was no easy task. We cropped the pictures in half on an extra tab on our Photoshop bar and then merged them together on the main cover using copy and paste. Then we used the dragging tool to adjust these pictures so that they were symmetrical. We had some difficulties when it came to putting the two pictures together because no matter how hard you try, the pictures can't be in exactly the same place, so we had to put them together as close as we could. The title of our magazine front cover is Motion in a big bold font that we just got off the Mac. This is because it establishes its importance. This is why we chose a font that was bold and powerful. A juxtaposition to this was the effect that we chose for the masthead. On Photoshop there were lots of different options and effects for what you can put on your writing, but we chose to use a glittery effect to attract our female target audience. Like the magazine cover, for the film poster we used Photoshop. However, using Photoshop for this project was more complicated because we had to cut different pictures together because we didn't take them at the same time. One of the main features that we used on the film poster is the stamp tool. We used this to make sure the hair looked natural because we shot the pictures on green and red backgrounds and there was a glare of colour on their hair. So we used the stamp tool to make their hair look more natural. What we did was we selected one bit of the hair that we thought looked really nice and then copied it onto a bit of the hair that had the glare on it. To make the poster look a bit more eerie and to emphasise the era we made some of the features on the poster more opaque. For example, we adjusted the opacity of the letter over the top of the poster to show some of the storyline through the poster as another way of explaining the plot. I think we used this tool well because I think that it, again, emphasised the era of the 1940s and made the whole poster look a bit more solemn. We used Google to search for billing blocks so that we could make our own. We adjusted the fonts on the text boxes to fit them all together to make it look like a billing block.
We struggled with doing this because we initially put the billing block on a really small sized file, so when we zoomed in it was very blurry. The, the solution to this was, however, just to copy and paste all of the text boxes onto a new and bigger file. However, in the end I think it looked really professional and realistic. Whilst doing the research and planning I mainly used the internet and editing software. I used YouTube Blogger and Google Images a lot. I used Blogger to put things onto my blog that I had edited with the aforementioned editing software of either iMovie or Windows Movie Maker. I used YouTube a lot with watching trailers and uploading my videos. And I know that Google Images seems a bit simple when it comes to researching, but I searched for lots of different pictures and it gave me loads of information about codes and conventions and it also gave me inspiration for planning. I liked using Blogger throughout my coursework because I put all of my work on there so it shows the journey through my coursework to my final production and still images. This year we learned a lot of new things about Blogger such as putting labels onto posts to keep them all in the same categories and we also learned how to change the dates on posts so we could put them all in the right order. This really helped because it means that I can present things more coherently and they aren't in a mishmash like it may have been last year. In order to put my research onto my blog, I had to use many different media technologies and platforms such as Prezi, Poplar and Vocaroos for podcasts. I used Prezi rarely, wanted to keep my blog more interactive. I used Poplar as more of a mood board or presentation device as it was easy to keep all of my thoughts in one place, such as when I put the pictures of props up on my blog. Vrockaroo was probably the media technology I used the most because I had to work up the courage to do videos and a podcast was the next best thing. I also like to use Vrockaroo when I'm writing a paragraph under some work and I don't want my post to be too text heavy. The main media technology I used was YouTube. Be it creating videos or watching them, it was probably the outlet that I used most during the whole of the coursework process. When I put my videos on YouTube, I had to edit them beforehand, so I used iMovie or Windows Movie Maker, depending on what I could get access to at the time. Sometimes I just added titles and edited it out when I messed up with my talking, but sometimes, like on my sense and sensibility analysis, I added extra things like music and pictures in pictures. When it came to planning for our trailer production, we did mostly brainstorm sessions, such as making giant mind maps and writing down timelines of the plot of our film. We filmed a few of these discussions and put them on our blogs, editing them on iMovie or Windows Movie Maker. A big part of planning is researching costumes, locations and props. A main way in which I use media technologies whilst planning for this was going once again on Google Images. I found lots of inspirations for costumes, so when we went to charity shopping, I knew what we were looking for. Therefore, this media technology really helped me because it prepared me and made me more organised. During the planning period, I made a blog post about costumes where I made a couple of Picassians, which are GIFs, of costumes to demonstrate. I like to make GIFs because it makes pictures more interactive and interesting instead of just simple solid pictures. When it came to writing the questions, to just put an essay on my blog seemed really boring, so I decided to do two films with me talking and two voiceovers with pictures inserted to make my blog more interactive and less boring. When I did question one, which is the one about using, challenging and developing, I did a really long voiceover. I put this on iMovie and inserted lots of pictures and videos, although there were some times when there was no picture on the screen and it was just plain black. Editing was a bit of a struggle because the pictures didn't seem to come up on the screen when I tried to insert them, so I had to make a quick time screen recording of the pictures and insert the pictures as videos instead. This helped me because what I was talking about was pictured on the screen as a visual representation and it also added some movement into the video that would have otherwise been a plain and boring voiceover. With question two, which was the one about the media product and ancillary text linking together, I decided to do a video because it would be shorter and therefore wouldn't be as many takes. I had the same issue as before with the pictures, so I just did the same and used video screen recordings using QuickTime instead of the pictures. Question 3, which was about audience feedback, was better presented than the one about ancillary texts because the camera I was using was clearer. I used an actual Samsung camera this time as opposed to a webcam. When it came to editing that video, it was all fairly simple. I just put it all together on iMovie, added titles, and then I inserted the pictures. However, much like the rest of them, instead of using pictures, I used little QuickTime videos, because for some reason, the pictures didn't seem to work. This question, question four, which is about how I used my media technologies throughout the construction, planning, evaluation, and research stages, 
was um, a bit harder to do because it's a very long voiceover which means that I had to fill all of the spaces in with pictures and videos and even though I wanted to do this most of the time it wasn't possible because there isn't enough to put in that would cover the whole of the video.